Hello, this is Chris Wakefield from High Tech High Media Arts and part of the class for New School Creation as part of UC Berkeley and High Tech High's collaboration for a MOOC. Before I start my presentation, I want to talk about what is the purpose of schooling? And when you think about that, it sounds like a simple question, but then you look a little deeper and you're like, does schooling mean that you're just transmitting information to workers? Or does it mean that you're just trying to train workers? Do you have, does a school purpose, is the purpose of that to have one omnipotent teacher that knows everything and students just copying notes and just getting information plugging into their heads? I'm not so sure that's the way school should be. When I was in school, you get questions like, who were the major players in the Crimean War? Or what caused the Crimean War? Or even worse, things like, what were the dates of the Crimean War? When did this battle happen? I like the first two questions, but to answer those questions back in the 90s and 80s and 70s, you had to do this. You had to go to a library and search through card catalog after card catalog to find the absolute right book or encyclopedia, or you'd have to go through page after page of microfiche. Today, information is a commodity. Students have every bit of information on their smartphones. You ask a kid today who were the major players in the Crimean War or what caused it, they can find this information in the, in the split second. They can also find first sources, first-hand sources and interview people from around the world using today's technology. Like I said before, information is a commodity. Gone are the days where we can just do schools like this with students in perfectly nice rows with a teacher in the back just watching over to make sure students are in line. That's good if your students are being trained to work in a factory where there's bells that tell them what to do and where to go. Today's students aren't going to have jobs available with that. Our 21st century ed economy needs a 21st century education. So the 21st century workplace is drastically different to the industrial workplace of the 19th and 20th centuries. Many students cannot expect to find those careers. Our best and brightest need to work together to solve problems. We need to make sure we have students with strong left brain analytical skills from science, technology, engineering, and math. But We also need to develop students who are yearning to be passionate learners and being very creative. They need to have both their left brain and their right brain engaged in order to be successful in our 21st century economy. Most education these days just goes over the tip of the iceberg. They only get, they go a mile wide and an inch deep. But true education must go deeper. We want students to go deeper so they're engaged. We want our students to look at inquiry-based projects and inquiry-based learning. Students will learn through a variety of techniques at our school. Vital to learning will be the pursuit of knowledge through student inquiry. Teachers will guide students through a project cycle, examining high-quality work, planning ahead, executing their plan, critiquing each other and revising their work until they feel it's ready for public exhibition. Exhibitions can be anything from displays around school to performances to book publishing. Take a look at some of these examples right here. These are examples by teachers at High Tech High and High Tech High Media Arts where they combine artistic graffiti and some of their literary books that they read like Catch-22 and To Kill a Mockingbird or this project over here where students created and wrote a play and acted it out at the La Jolla Playhouse and in engineering they built the sets. Or this project right here which is uh, economics and English combined where each student did an art piece that represented their different topics that they research in economics. Things that our students are engaged about. And the other thing is getting students to be really engaged in their work by, by having public exhibitions. Having the school as an exhibition space where student work is up on the walls and students can go through and see and touch and feel all the learning that's being in place. Gone are the days of schedules like this where students go from class to class to class and have independent teachers doing independent study for their own subjects. We need to have some blended learning in our school and that's why we'll combine math and science and then English and history for grades six through nine. The upper grades, it's a little harder to combine st stuff like chemistry and math or biology and math. But in the younger grades, physics and algebra, physics and math go perfectly hand in hand. 
and then the younger grades, it works out perfectly. And same thing with English and history. We want these students to see teachers for at least two hours per day to build strong relationships. And by doing this, teachers will reduce the number of students that they see in a given week. They're only going to see 100 students per year group. The daily schedule is streamlined so that students will see only a few teachers, as opposed to seeing 15 or so teachers a week. That happens in England and some places in the United States. The other thing at our school is that a supported teacher is a happy teacher, and a happy teacher is a good teacher. Teachers will work hard to support one another to build a trusting, collegial teaching culture. Teachers will, will meet before school three times per week for professional development meetings. In PD meetings, teachers will work together to plan projects and build school culture. Teachers will also grow as educators by working together in the same way that students will. And one of those ways is collegial coaching. Teachers will work as critical friends with each other and mentors. And uh, collegial coaches will work one another throughout the year by videotaping each other's lessons to examine so each teacher can improve. One of the things about our school is that in the United States, there is a wide uh, disparity between income based on where you live. And a lot of times that translates into the education that you can get as well. In San Diego alone, you can see uh, zip codes like this one, 92113, which is a little southeast of downtown. This zip code is in the third percentile for income and income in college, where right across the bridge, Coronado is the 93rd percentile. Or you have the 89th percentile right here where High Tech High is located in the 92106. Normally, in the United States, students go to a high school in their neighborhood. And what ends up happening is, is that the people in richer neighborhoods normally end up getting going to better schools and having better options than students that live in lower income neighborhoods. This stat just absolutely blows me away. That only 82, sorry, 82 percent of students from the highest quartile of income complete college by age 24, where only 8 percent of students from the lowest quartile of income complete college by the age of 24. And that's a study done by www.postsecondary.org. Um, and that's, that blows me away. One way to combat this is zip code lotteries. Um, nowadays, there, is, uh, there are some federal programs where uh, the new federal education department guidelines from January allow charters to give more weight to low-income zip codes in their school lotteries. So this will allow us to get that mix where all students have access to a quality education. Now we, there comes the, the time of to figure out where to put the school. I've chosen four sample locations that I think would be great for a school. Right here is the main one I was looking at in the Morena and Linda Vista district and areas. You can see right here, they're along the green trolley line. There's also some great bus routes that get there because of the uh, access to the Old Town Trolley station right there. In this area right here, there are many warehouses that could be purchased for a little cheaper than most of the other commercial buildings that are available elsewhere in San Diego. The access being only a half mile or so from the trolley station makes it very easy for students to get to and from school. And there's an access to the YMCA, which is right here, which would give us some great um, fields for sports. Over here, our students can get out of the classroom in Mission Bay and the San Diego River to look at environmental impacts of industry. There's also similar warehouse space here in Midtown and a little bit southeast of the uh, downtown as well. There's easy access to these locations because of their access to the trolley. Now it's just a matter of finding a building and making sure it works. This fourth space here is kind of a future spot and that's all dependent on the San Diego Chargers. Within the next several years, the Chargers will probably be either moving out of San Diego or building a new uh, stadium. In either case, if they build a stadium somewhere else than Qualcomm, other than Qualcomm, or if they move, this space will become available and the stadium will get torn down and probably get rezoned for commercial and residential use. And there could be ample opportunity to build a new school on that site. Now I want to show you a little bit about the class layout. Our school will have a layout that's very simple. To me, less is more. So when students walk in, there's a shared common space. 
with couches and movable tables and small breakout rooms for students to work quietly. And then students can go to their grade level areas. So in ninth grade, they go into a class. And so over here, they would have humanities, which would be English and history. And down here, they'd have math and science working together with breakable walls where they can build that culture amongst teachers. And the common area with uh, desktop computers. And then the highlight of the school would be this maker space in the middle. And this maker space is modeled after Maker Place, which is in Morena, which would only be a half mile away as well. But students could schedule to use a wide variety of tools, such as laser cutters and saws and sanders and textiles tools. Basically, it's a high school shop class on steroids. And this place right here will support the projects that teachers are doing in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And with this maker space, students are going to be combining their hands and minds to create amazing displays that will be posted all around school. By having these displays around school and in the general public nearby, our students will be able to see the power of their work and they'll generally be more engaged. Now we got to look at how do we find teachers and hire them. Um, one of the best things to do is, is uh, I think, is word of mouth. So finding teachers through different graduate schools, through friends of friends, and I think that's a great way to find teachers in addition to doing Ed Join, Craigslist, LinkedIn, and those other websites that can find teachers. San Diego County also has, San Diego Unified also has charter school meet and greets for teachers where potential teachers can interview on the spot and give resumes to different schools. From there, it's just calling potential candidates for a brief phone interview. And if we still, if we still like feel we're on the same page, we'll bring them in for a short in-person interview and tour of the school and school grounds. Then we'll give those teachers a chance to have a demo lesson and interview other staff and potential students. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please contact me at cwakefield at hightechhigh.org.